Hello, Mr. Machieski, how are you? I am doing great. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday. I'm excited because we're starting, we're finally starting our Monday mortgage and market update. We've been talking about this forever. We're finally doing it. I know it's always a little bit nervous getting something new started like this, but there's like, I think there's so much information, so much going on in the economy right now. Yeah. And I always use the adage, you have to invest into your decision how to move forward and when you do that you can yes. understand better how to make the best decision for yourself Absolutely. in the real estate and mortgage world but Absolutely. and so it's 2 15 now mm -hmm. but next monday we're going to do 11 a.m mm -hmm. for everybody so it'll be mortgage monday and market mm -hmm. 11 a.m on mondays we're going to be consistent with it and so anyone watching if you if you have questions please feel free to send them i'm going to keep watching the chat um, if I can see a question and we'll either answer them live if for some reason we need to do some digging We'll do mm -hmm. the digging and then we'll yeah. get the answers to you. We'll post them um, underneath the video mm -hmm. or we'll incorporate them into our next week's Whatever works live. out, whatever we yeah. need to do. Yeah, so we absolutely. love to answer questions and, and be we want to be the resources and the mm -hmm. community market leaders So we're gonna get right into it. So yeah. last week we we came live and we talked about the crisis that the banks were going through, mm -hmm. you gave a really great synopsis of what happened with Silicon Valley and the Bank mm -hmm. of New York, and, and I know that we've got some updates to that, so I'm just going to let you kind of roll yeah. with it with um, the update, where we're at with that, have we seen anything else happen, you know, what's going yeah. on with all the, so the what bank you, stuff. What you're seeing here within the market, and, and it does affect the mortgage markets and the real estate market, you know, when anything when you know the commons like a three-legged stool and I don't even know if that's the right analogy but anytime one of those legs become loose you know you know it's a matter of the dominoes fall and if the stool falls over so what's happened since the big thing happened with SVB is um, there's been a couple other bank failures mm -hmm. and within those bank failures today there was Credit Suisse was UBS and now they're gonna buy a Credit Suisse so a lot of the and that's big a Swiss banks, bank right yes everyone always talks about oh I want a Swiss bank yeah. account so you're telling me the Swiss bank is having an issue they're having an issue okay. and ubs okay. is buying them out so where it's a UBS. little bit who's yeah. ubs ubs Payne weber i forget what the acronym okay. stands for okay. but yeah, i know to... you probably heard of ubs and i yeah no okay good no for all the people who are not as um mm -hmm. as up on this as you are because i know you know a lot i'll just be that sounding board to remind you that yeah. there's our us lay people <laughs> over here some of us that don't know no so i think you know really what it what we're moving into and under you know, as, as far as it affects the real estate market, is to understand how it's going to affect the, the Fed meeting. The Fed meeting is on Wednesday. Yes. It's actually tomorrow and Wednesday. They announce it on Wednesday. But mm -hmm. within the Fed meeting, what they announced there as far as the rate increase, and there's one thing important to uh, point out with the Federal Reserve, and the, I always get calls when it happens after they raise it. It doesn't directly affect mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. If you have a home equity line of credit, that is the only interest rate that the Fed really, as a consumer, will touch. Oh, I know. I know. So, yeah. Oh, you know, I know. I'm, I'm all excited about this yeah. week, and what are they going to do to me now? So, it's, there was expectation it could be 50, possibly 75 mm -hmm. basis points, because they're really trying to push off inflation, because inflation is, like is still harder. Is half of half a percentage or three quarters of a percentage ish yeah okay but now they're saying it could because of this they're only going to probably uh you know raise it a quarter percent only yeah so it's <laughs> for only raising but a quarter. ironically or you know whatever the word is is uh within the mortgage rates sometimes it's nice to see that because the more there you see what's happening and not only it's just what they do but uh yeah, so ADD is kicking in over here. But, <laughs> Sorry, uh, squirrel. <laughs> so it will affect that. So is it closer? We the more they do this, of course we're getting to the rate. The rates coming down a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. um, but what do you see going on with the, the real estate market right now? Like, I know so, it's a crazy time. yeah. So it it is it is interesting. So I have my little notes, and I can send you guys any if you really want specific notes. I'll send it. So we just got the data a couple days ago through the MLS. The MLS will send us a monthly update on actual you know numbers charts everything you could ask mm -hmm. for on on the data so i pulled just macomb and open county and if anybody lives in another area i can i can pull that as well like i've got some gross point data they have gross point has their own charts but if anyone's in gross point wants to know i'm mm -hmm. happy to pull that data as well but i think a lot of people that that i talk to are either in macomb or open county but if you're outside of it and you want specific data let us know. Also, if you're in a specific city, because again, this now this is just going to give the entire, you know, the entire county. 
but it's interesting because Macomb and Oakland have the same either negative or positive indicators. Now the numbers are different, but they're the same. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing the same thing happening just at a different percent, you know, percentage of change. So really quickly, I'm just going to give you a couple metrics for Macomb County, and then I'll give up one like right away. So Macomb, new listings. Now, when we're looking at, there's there's two options. There's either just February, so it compares February 2023 to February 2022, or year to date. So just basically January, February of 2023 being compared to January, February uh, did I say 2022? 2023 yeah, yeah. being compared to 2022. So I'm actually going to just use the year to date because they're they're similar um, and, and and it's just like I said, there's so many numbers that I'm just gonna like just just year to date. So when we're looking at new listings, Macomb County is down 14% for new listings year to date. Oakland County is down. 13.7, so they're almost exactly the same, about 14%. Both counties are down for new listings um, year to date. Pending sales, meaning anything that went pending, January or February, um, down 11% in Macomb, down 16.2% Oakland. Mm -hmm. Closed sales, so closings that happen year to date, we are down 21.5% in Macomb and 25.7% in Oakland. Um, now we're gonna get some positive numbers, so this is where it gets interesting. So, so far, I've been telling you we're down. We're down in new listings. Mm -hmm. We're down for what's going pending, which mm -hmm. means, you know, we're getting a buyer to say yes and, and put in a contract. And we're down on closings. However, when we look at the next couple indicators, it's interesting because they're all up. So, median sales price. Now, here's what people are saying to us. People were saying, oh, prices are going to plummet, right? They're going to go down. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're seeing. In Macomb County, the median sales price year to date is up. 6.3%, and in Oakland, it's up 5.8%. Mm -hmm. When you look at the average sales price, meaning you know, median sales price and average sales price are kind of similar. I don't know why they make this distinction, but they do. Average sales price is up 2.6% in Macomb, and it's up 1.8% in Oakland County. Now, mm -hmm. these aren't grand numbers that they're up, but my thought is when you're looking at the market, if we were seeing that listings were down, pendings were down, closings were down, and people were getting less for their houses, mm -hmm. that might be a little more concerning to me than it is to see that what that says is, so when you analyze the data, what it's mm -hmm. saying is that we have less listings still, yep. but we still have a demand. We yep. still have buyers that are in the market searching, and it's because mm -hmm. of great lenders like you who are coming up with solutions. The rate has gone up, Mm -hmm. But there are solutions to that, and we're able to offer structurally deals that will put everyone in a win-win mm -hmm. situation. Because the whole point is, one of the big tenets for me in real estate, and I know you feel the same way, is win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. How can we all win? Both sides yeah. win. How can everybody win? I think it's, it's hard to 100% say, like, what's your definition of winning? But mm -hmm. most people's definition is they get a good value on a house and a good payment. And looking back, what happened over the last 15, 20 years, it's with a foreclosure crisis and everything that happened, I think that's what people are heading into is a little bit nervous now is, is again, um, what to do, uh, you know, can they afford the payment and what's gonna happen is the market gonna come down again. And the bottom line is, is really, I don't think it's gonna come down. Like you're saying, it's, you know, with the amount of listings going, uh, dropping, it was about 13, 14%. Yep, 14. It makes sense that the prices are up because mm -hmm. the demand is still out there. So, exactly. Um, but uh, I, I think, you know, the one thing that hits me and it really is important, is like if you're gonna list a house, I think now is a really good time to list it. It's great There time. is some short and medium long-term uncertainty. And if you're concerned about that uncertainty and what's gonna, how it's gonna unfold in the economy, I think this might be the best time to list a house, you know? I think so too. I mean, we're not gonna get in politics, but there's a lot going on right mm -hmm. now, globally, nationally, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. And what we, what we know is now. No one has a crystal ball. We do like to look at the what the economists say. We do try to really get that trajectory on where we're going. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, all we have is what we know right now and what we can see happening in the market. Mm -hmm. And typically, typically, right, we did have a great increase that went up really fast. We've yeah. seen that within the, like in a month. We said, whoa, they went from three to five really quick. Mm -hmm. But typically, if it's a good right now, we can project about 30 days to mm -hmm. 60 days being you know, similar market, I would say, you know, barring the unforeseen. So if somebody is, is getting listed today, mm -hmm. you know, 
we're looking at, um, so days on market, I didn't give you. So the average days on market, now this is a little bit, this is an increase as well. Year to date, um, 44, it's up in Macomb County from 33. So last year in 2022, the year to date was about 33 mm -hmm. days on the market. Right now it's 44, so it's up about a third. Um, and then in Oakland, it went from 34 days on market to 42 days, so it's up 23 and a half percent. So we're seeing a few more yeah. days on market, but here's the thing. I feel like that's more because of January's data that is being pulled in there because we had, you know, we had a low between mm -hmm. like, you know, November, December, January, February, it was kind of, it was a little bit, yep. it's, it's actually, I'd like to see the data next month mm -hmm. for April. It'll be interesting to see because we're, we're seeing more activity now because I, I feel like people settled in to the rate. Mm -hmm. They settled into the fact that the sky isn't falling per se, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, it's changed. Yeah. The landscape has changed a bit, but the rate, you know, historically yeah. is, I'm going to say this until people get it. Historically, the rate's 12%. When you look at the late 70s yeah. to now. So even at a 6%, 7%, you know, we're not looking at what our parents had to contend with mm -hmm. with regard to a rate. So we're still in a good place. And you brought up a good point when people say, is it a good market? Well, it depends on your goals. If somebody comes to me and says, how do I want to move in two years? Am I going to be able to make money if I buy now? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is, I don't know. Because when you're looking at you, the difference between being a buyer and a seller, mm -hmm. the sellers, the seller fees on their side is about 8% because typically they pay the real estate fees, right? So mm -hmm. you'd have to essentially, to break even, you'd have to sell about 8% higher than where you're buying. Yeah. So can I guarantee that's going to happen in two months, in two years? No, I can't guarantee that. Nobody can guarantee that. But it makes sense to say, can you afford, like you said, can you afford the payment? Yeah. You know, um, I almost never tell people to rent, but if you know for sure you're only gonna be here for one year and then you're moving out of state, yeah, it awesome. might be a good idea for you to rent for one year. Mm -hmm. That's probably the only class of people that I would say, let's look at that for you. Because again, if your numbers are that tight, you can't guarantee that, you know, again, if it's going up this year in Macomb County, 2.6% and in Oakland County, 1.8%, you know, that's going to, and, and then again, you know, next year, if we see a higher increase, then could we get you closer to that? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Depends on where you live. That's the other thing. Where that's do you what's, live? What hits me out here as you're talking to people, and might be people listening, is, is I always like to say, again, reconcile yourself to your decision. Mm -hmm. And when you educate yourself, when you go through these numbers, and when you ask yourself these questions, and you go through the what ifs, you can have a better picture going forward. I always tell people, it's like, talk to me three or six months before you. Always. Before you're getting into the mix, because you want to dip your toes in the water, see what it's feeling like, seeing what you need to learn. Exactly. Our time is free for you, so it's like you can get to sit down and pick my brain and enjoy going through it, not to mention what you can do with the credit. But as you invest yourself and plug into these numbers, it may seem like this second, like we're going on and being irrelevant, but as you step through the process, as you can learn more and more, you can feel comfortable what the right thing is to do. Because right. it may not be the right time to buy a house. Right. It might be best to, to rent. But right. again, I, wrapping it up, because I know we've been on for a little bit, is I think uh, that's a, if there's one thing that I can say in the market to give advice for, is like if you are thinking about selling a house this year, get it on the market. This is the like, time. This is a time. This is March, April, this, the time. Is, yes. this is the time. I think, you know, uh, listings are down, like you said, 14%. So the days on the market, what hits me with the days on the market is, is the exact thing. It's like people were pulling the trigger a little bit quicker. Now mm -hmm. they're, they're a little bit more methodical, which might right. lead to less increases or the demands there. Because it is hard mm -hmm. at six and a half, seven percent 7%, you know, when we were getting 3% right. just a couple of years, a year and a half ago to, you know, Take in that whole it's new It's a payment. mindset shift. But you have to compare it's it against the rents, shift. against tax deductions mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And it mm -hmm. really is, when you take a look at the numbers all together, it still is better to buy than to rent. I of still course. think there is more room for appreciation. So if rates go up to 10%, there might be a crash in the market you know, sometime. But I just, I think they're going to end up going down, if not later this year. Well, I mean, it's year. cyclical. So it yeah. would be silly for us to say the market's never going to come down. Mm -hmm. that, we would never say that because that wouldn't, that's not historically accurate. Mm -hmm. But what makes sense is you got to live somewhere. And the number one thing is just live within your means. Mm -hmm. Find a payment you can afford because then it doesn't matter what's happening in the market. If you stay in your house, if you know you're going to stay in your house for a few years, mm -hmm. you know, barring the unforeseen, 
Great. Now, again, you've got to ask yourself, is my job stable? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is my income stable? Can I afford this house? Because even again, even if the rates go up and in two years, you know, you're, you're, let's, let's say your value of your house went down in three years or whatever. Let's just pretend it did. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to sell in a downtime. You wait. Right? You can wait a second, and as long as you can sustain that payment, you're locked in with your rate. Yeah. So that's what's most important is people get so worried about the fluctuation. It's kind of like with stocks. Now, I'm not a big stock market person, but from what I hear, it's a long game. You know, mm -hmm. People will see you know, people's portfolios right now. They're not, they're not even looking at them from what I hear. They're like, I don't even want to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a cyclical thing, and it will hopefully come back. You know, yeah. and We'll see those gains again. But, but it's not, you know, real estate is not a... Um, you know, buying today, we're going to sell tomorrow. Typically, people are going to live there for a little while and enjoy it. Yeah. So as long as we follow smart money rules, and I know you're really good at helping people set themselves up for success. Mm -hmm. Like you said, talk to me three to six months before. Don't feel guilty about calling us. You're not wasting our time. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. Yeah. We expect that. So that I kind of like can, that. I love that because then I know that we're being set up for, it's not a fire sale, number one, where they have to move right now or they have to get out right now. If they know they're, they're hey, I'm renting and I'm, my lease is up in six months, come talk to us. Mm -hmm. Let's get you ready for that because we've got to start looking, I would say three months just to see the market, what's happening in the market three, three months before you want to be out. Mm -hmm. Because again, we may not get, we're seeing multiple offers again right now, depending on the market that you're in. So you may not get the house just because you like it. You may not get it the first time time out. You know, it might be competition. People are acclimating to these interest rates and they see what we have and they're, you know, known historically speaking that these are still really good rates and the prices, although up, you know, are still not too high. So it's still going to move. It's we're, gonna we're, move doing, so. we're doing well yeah. historically and yeah. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. This is so fun. We we'll enjoy, uh, we'll enjoy our time. You know, broad stroke and a lot of different issues. I think yeah. we got to talk about uh, how to focus in on some laser focus issues in, in the home buying process next time. So absolutely, all right. we like to talk clearly. We yes. have a podcast. If you don't have, if you haven't watched our Ready podcast with Ken and CC, his wife, and Jeff Baboud, our attorney, yes. our fabulous divorce attorney friend, we have fun with our podcast. And um, that one drops what next week? We have a new one dropping next week with. What's the name? Habitasher? It's a Habitasher. Ha yeah, the Habitasher. Habitasher. Yes. Habitasher. Yeah, yes. I got it right. He has a good yes. guy. I like him. It made yes. me realize I got to yes. go out and buy some nice clothes for myself. So. <laughs> you get to treat yourself. Yes, yes. Because you're, you're on that journey. Yep. All right, yeah. so I didn't see any questions coming through, but if anyone's watching this later on and you have a question, feel free to just put it in the chat and we will answer it yeah. or we'll do a video with it. And um, as always, everybody have a fabulous day. Stay safe and we'll see, see you next Monday. Bye. Take care.